What's up guys and welcome back to part 3 in the video series Attacking 0365 using Team Filtration. In the previous parts we covered setting up Team Filtration as well as using the enumeration module. If you haven't watched those videos yet I highly recommend checking them out before proceeding. In this part we're going to take a look at the spraying module specifically and how to use it effectively in order to identify valid credentials and hopefully compromising some 0365 accounts. So last time we ended the video by enumerating a series of email addresses against the target tenant and in doing so storing a set of valid emails in our centralized database. Now when using the spraying module we are automatically pulling out those valid emails and targeting them for the password spraying attack. That's also why it's very important to keep the same output path between the enumeration and spraying stage so that team filtration can find the database that you generated during enumeration and use those emails to perform the password spraying attacks. If you're not familiar with password spraying attacks, it's essentially just password guessing. You take a large list of emails and you take a password and you attempt that password against all the accounts and you repeat this every hour or every other hour in order to avoid locking out the accounts in the case of Auth365. The team filtration spraying module allows you to do this and it also has a bunch of features in order to do this more effectively. In order to access the spraying module, you have to provide the team filtration config using dash dash config, as well as your out path or workspace using that dash dash out path. Then type dash dash spray and then dash dash help if you would like the help menu to show up. Let's look at some of the arguments available within the spraying module. The first option, AIDSSO, is referencing a logging technique or authentication method found by SecureWorks, I believe last year or the year before. Essentially, it uses a very specific endpoint hidden away within Azure Active Directory in order to perform the login attempts. Now, initially, these login attempts were not logged, and I still think the telemetry coming from this endpoint is still limited compared to the original endpoint. You may or may not want to use this against your target. I highly recommend reading up on the original blog post. You can find the link to that down in the description. Uh, make sure you got an understanding of what this technique does before you use it. The same goes for dash dash US cloud. If you're attacking companies within the US that are tied to the government, they might have something called a US tenant or a US Azure Active Directory environment. These US government entities typically use the Microsoft Online.us uh, domain instead of the .com domain. So notice the top level domain is .us, not .com. Again, this is going to vary on the target you're attacking. Uh, you may or may not want to use this. Moving on, we have a bunch of options actually configuring the spraying. So dash dash passwords. If you want to provide a list of your own passwords, you can do that using dash dash passwords. If you do not provide a list of passwords, a team filtration will automatically generate some. Those are based on the season, month, and the sort of top 20 commonly weak passwords known to be used. That's just sort of my personal list uh, that I typically use that's baked into this. And if you choose to go the automatic password generation route, you can actually choose what passwords to be generated using these three options. So season only will generate passwords containing only seasons, months only will generate passwords containing months, and then the common one will generate the top most common passwords uh, I have found to be working across tenants. You could check out the passwords itself if you peek into the source code a bit. Going back up a bit, you also have the dash dash exclude option. This allows you to exclude a set of emails from the password spraying. So maybe you validated some emails and then the client is like, hey, please don't spray these users. Those are service accounts or whatnot. And instead of going into the database and removing them, you could do the dash dash exclude and provide a list of emails you would like to exclude from the password spray. Going back down, we also have a couple of shop flow options. And these are a direct result of trying to combat Azure Smart Lockout. I allow you to both shuffle passwords, users, and regions when performing a password spraying attack. So if you shuffle passwords, I will mix up the order of the passwords generated before spraying them, so you don't always spray the same password towards all the users. If you do shuffle users, I will shuffle the user list, so you don't always spray the same um, order of users uh, when performing the password spraying attack. And then you have shuffle regions, and that is directly tied to Firefox. So that will shuffle the region during the spray. So if you have 10 Firefox, uh, sorry, 10 Firefox regions specified in your config, then I will shuffle those 10 during the spray. So not all the login attempts originate from the same region. That has also shown to be very effective against the Azure Smart Lockout system. Moving on, you have dash dash auto exfil. This will automatically move into data exfiltration once a valid login is found. This is typically useful if you're running at the infiltration on the server overnight and you don't want to 
uh, risk the user changing its password or the alert forcing a password change uh, between you waking up and you know the password being uh, found. So basically, automatically triggers data exfiltration once a valid login is found. Further down, we have options all related to the timing of the spray. So you have a sleep min and sleep max. So the way team filtration works is that it doesn't sleep, um, or you, I guess you can tell it to if you really want to, but it doesn't sleep a specific time between the sprays. It sleeps a random interval between a minimum and a maximum value. So the default is between 60 and 100 minutes. So I'm trying to be outside of that minimum one time an hour, but I'm also trying to not wait, you know, more than two hours between each spray. So you can change that if you wanted to spray every 90 minutes, you could set sleep min and max to the same value and it will spray every 90 minutes. Dash dash jitter, that's going to be the sleeping time between the individual login attempts. If you want to sort of space out the login attempts over a longer period of time, that could typically be useful if it's a small organization with not many users you're targeting. Uh, if say there's a couple of hundred users and you hit it once an hour, uh, the Azure Smart Lockout might kick in faster because there's a smaller, smaller user base. And therefore you might want to incre increase that jitter in order to make that spraying um, sort of process longer or the spraying window longer. And then you have time window. And this is very handy if you have a client who doesn't want you to perform certain operations within, uh, you know, outside of working hours. So you could tell the infiltration, hey, I want you to spray only between 7 a.m. in the morning and 5 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon. Uh, again, just avoiding outside of working hours. And then you have some notification options. So push dash dash push will give you a push of a notification if a valid login is found. Dash dash push locked will give you a push of a notification if you lock out an account. And then you have the last one, which is dash dash force. Uh, this will ignore the time between the sprays and forcefully start a new spray without waiting the appropriate amount of time in order to avoid locking out accounts. Dash dash force in particular can be very useful because team filtration is a smart system and keeps track of when your last spray was, including the spraying we did during the enumeration. So the enumeration method we used in this case against this target was the dash dash validate login method. And the dash dash validate login method actually attempts to log in using that email in order to validate that it exists. So if I fire off dash dash spray now with no parameters, team filtration will tell me that, hey, we have still 14 minutes we need to sleep before we can continue because during, during the enumeration phase, I actually performed some spraying against accounts in order to validate them. So if I would like to skip this, I can kill it with uh, control C and do dash dash force. And then team filtration will ignore that last spray and continue on. And you see now we're spraying. Now let's try to use the dash dash shuffle regions and dash dash shuffle passwords options as well. So you'll see now, now it's going to start up and create a Firefox instance for each of the regions we have specified in our config file. And then it's going to spray it and shuffle the passwords and the regions. You see it's randomizing the regions on the left here and randomizing the passwords on the right. And this has proven to be effective against uh, stuff like Azure Smart Lockout in the long run. Now let's try to use our own password list. So we're going to create a new uh, text document here and just call it passwords. And then I'm going to add one called legit corp, one, two, three, exclamation mark, legit corp bang, one, two, three, exclamation mark, just a couple of passwords for testing. And then in the command, I'll do dash dash passwords. Oops, if I can type and then passwords. And then this will use that list of passwords to spray. Let's see if we get any hits. Oh, wow, we got a hit. So we can see that the user Bruce Wayne did indeed have the password you did corp123 exclamation mark, but we got blocked by the conditional access policy. Now, in the next portion of the video series, we'll take a look at the exfiltration module where we can actually enumerate that conditional access policy and potentially identify a gap that we can use to gain access to resources and exfiltrate data. That's it for part three, the spraying module. Thank you so much for uh, watching my video. Consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing. You can catch me live on Twitch every Sunday at 6 p.m. UTC, where I stream hacking and development-related content. I hope to see you there next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.